We are back. You know, you've probably heard the term feng shui, but what exactly does it mean? And why are people incorporating it into their homes? Well, there's a Minnesotan that's gained a large following online talking about it. His name is Frank Fu. You might recognize his wife, Gladys Tay. Frank started posting just over a month ago. He's only been doing this for a month, and some of his videos have already gone viral. This one right here has nearly 5 million views. Frank is here to tell us a little bit more about his studies of feng shui and his newfound following online. Welcome, Frank. Thank you for having me. I watched that video. I know what that video is about. I know that tip. Tell people at home about that one. It has 5 million views. Um, that views. Um, I think that's the one about love. Like if you want love in your life, just oh. sleep on this. W yes, that's a simple tip yeah. that if you want to attract a partner, future partner, you sleep only one side on only one side of the bed and leave space for your future partner. See, that's yep. wishful thinking, that? and it's good. <laughs> Tell us about the, the the study of feng shui and how you got into it. Um, my feng shui journey started in the early 2000s. That's when I met my wife. She actually is an empath. She could read, feels, energy of a person, objects, and places. That's why she's a big believer of feng shui. Um, when, before we made any big decision, she would use, um, like when we were looking for a new house, she would use our birth date and birth chart to um, find an ideal location f uh, for our house. So a couple of years ago, um, a friend's mom gave her the entire set of feng shui books, but she's not interested in studying it. Um, she prefers reading and feel energy. So she passed it to me. That's how I pick up this subject. What do you like about feng shui? Like what keeps you coming back to learn more about it? Mm, it's about learning the different types of energy and where it will be residing in our homes. When we understand how to use the energy, we are able to um, use it towards our advantage. For example, um, when we know our home wealth sector, um, we can set up a home office and work in that area. And that can encourage um, a promotion, closing deals, getting a new job, or anything that could lead to more prosperity. So in your study of this, it, it sounds like uh, you, 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 the feng shui, one of the principles is that a uh, home should be uh, square, rectangular. Tell us about that. Okay. Um, I learned that our home is divided into eight sectors, like in a map like okay. that, eight sectors. Um, some are auspicious and some are inauspicious to use. A square and rectangular home um, is perfect to live in because they are stable and balanced. If you have an odd-shaped home like l shape or triangular-shaped home, um, that probably means you have missing sectors in your home. Those missing sectors could be your health, and wealth sector, and missing those sectors could um, cost you financial loss and illnesses. It almost sounds like you need to be working with architects who are <laughs> creating these home designs yes, and yes. building homes. Mm -hmm. yep. <laughs> uh, what, what are some of the misconceptions about feng shui? Many people think that feng shui is related to religion or something to do with uh, superstition or juju but actually it's based on astrology um, according yeah. to planetary movements. Look, we have some examples to show people here and uh, you can sort of weigh in on it, um, talking about some feng shui design elements. The, the uh, kitchen sink. Yes. Kitchen sink and the stove can't be directly opposite each other? Uh, if the kitchen sink and stove are directly um, facing each other, that can create um, what we call fire and, and fire and water energy clash. And that clash can cause chaos in your home. For example, like um, disagreement, fights, or arguments. So this is something that you keep in mind when you and your wife were looking for homes. Oh, yes. Okay. Yep. Our kitchen is in L shape, yeah. so it's, it's good. Okay. <laughs> yeah, good. <laughs> like you wouldn't buy a home that had this setup. No, I won't. Okay. What about yeah. this? this chandelier Tell us about the, the chandelier, okay. yeah. Um, That's you, do, a you do not want chandelier. to have chandelier above your bed because um, that can disrupt your sleep. Um, that could cause you insomnia and it will give you extra pressure in your day to day life. Interesting. Yeah. 
Even I wouldn't a beautiful want that, one like that, huh? Don't block yeah. that thing mm -hmm. over the bed. No, nothing, I, nothing hanging above the bed. Because you would have installed it, you'd be terrified <laughs> well, to fall yeah, and crush too. you. I'd be afraid <laughs> it was going to fall. Uh, what about mirrors? Mirrors, you do not want mirrors reflecting your bed. Again, that can disrupt your sleep and causing you um, restless nights. And you could um, scare yourself when you wake up in the middle of the night. And nothing above yeah. your headboard? Uh, no, uh, hanging things above your headboard is is not great as well, Dis disrupting your sleep again, and it can create a sense that um, object might fall on you uh, while you're sleeping. It makes Rest sense. Sleep, yeah. it does make yeah. sense. Well, we gotta learn more about this and learn more about that wealth corridor, or wealth sector, or whatever yeah. that you said. <laughs> We'll talk. Frank, <laughs> yes. it was so nice to have yeah, you on. Nice thank, you. Oh, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for having me. Uh, we'll put a link to Frank's website and Instagram page for you on minnesotalive.com.